Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Adorn, and welcome to the health segment of Western Wisconsin Journal, our new show. This is the first episode. Tonight, I'm not going to bore you very much. This is going to be a, a brief show, and of course, I'm talking about a boring Medicare topic, but there's been enough consternation around the clinic lately that I think we should get things out in the air. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the annual wellness visit. You notice I didn't say it is the annual wellness exam because it is not an examination at all and there lies all the confusion. Medicare this year, 2011, has decided that once a year people over 65 can come in for this annual wellness visit and be investigated by their physicians in terms of maybe some specific needs. For instance, the purpose is really to identify health concerns and needs. Now, Medicare pays for this, but it's getting confused with the one-time Welcome to Medicare examination, which is done when you hit 65, you've got 12 months to do it. That's the one exam that Medicare will pay for. So you have a welcome exam and a wellness exam. Now, you've got to remember that the wellness exam is not an examination at all. Okay, what, what is it? What's, what's in the annual wellness screen? First of all, the physician or the nurse will uh, take a medical history or update the history that's already on your chart. There'll be a problems update. Uh, they will review your medications and see uh, if they correspond to what's already in the chart and update those. Of course, they always talk about allergies. You've got to get your allergies down. And then the really only exam part of this is that they'll take your blood pressure and your weight and height. That's it. They probably won't even take your temperature. Part of this exam is a screen for memory loss or cognitive dysfunction. That is if you're getting Alzheimer's disease or some kind of uh, thinking problems, especially as people get older, we get concerned about this. Sometimes the physician will have an administration of the mini mental exam, which screens various parts of function of the brain and memory. Or the physician or attendant may just ask a few questions. For instance, what day of the week is it? What month is it? Who's the president? What's the color of George Washington's white horse? And to get a baseline screening on, on cognitive function and possible memory loss. Another screen is done for functional ability. As we get older, we may not be able to take as good a care as our, of ourselves as as we'd like to. And there's usually a questionnaire that you do a little check off on and it may ask things like, are you able to wash yourself? Are you able to get yourself dressed? Are you able to provide food for yourself? Um, and then the, the next screen is a screen for depression. The government's very concerned about elderly and being depressed and having it undertreated. Uh, there are actual checkoffs that you may be asked to do, whether you're depressed or not. They may ask things like, are you sad most of the time? Do you lack ambition? Uh, that type of thing. Next is a very interesting part. You have to document what medical services are used by a person. And that's a little bit confusing. Uh, for instance, if you're on oxygen, you have to know what company is supplying your oxygen, if you have something like emphysema. Uh, one of the, part, the confusing parts is, do we put your consultants in or your specialists in there? I'm not quite sure about that. Um, if you have home health care come in, we'd have to include them in that. Um, the next one is, uh, evaluation of what preventative tests to do in the future, what you should have done maybe that year or in a few years down the line. Uh, certainly, Medicare pays for a lot of screening things like colonoscopy, 
uh, bone density uh, testing for osteoporosis, uh, flu shots, that, that type of thing. And then there is uh, discussion of advanced care planning. And I think this is a good idea. A lot of people don't make their wishes known to others, and this is when the doctor can say, well, if your heart stops or your breathing stops, do you want us to push on your chest, put a tube down and help you breathe? Uh, do you want us to jumpstart your heart or whatever? Um, or uh, just discussion about what a living will is. And a living will basically expresses your wishes generally if there's uh, uh, no hope of uh, recovery or recovery would be uh, a grim vegetative state or something like that. And uh, that's a good idea to do that. Now, you notice during this whole discussion of what's in the annual wellness screen, <clears throat> we didn't talk about any current complaints. For instance, if you show up and you've got a cold, runny nose, cough, and you want to be looked at, check your ears, check your throat, listen to your heart and lungs, that's going to generate a separate charge. So you can't get away with a free exam and have a, a, an examination of an, what we call an acute or a current problem and have an examination. That'll generate a separate charge and you will be charged for that. So you can't hide any special requests underneath the annual wellness visit. Um, there's no uh, evaluation we call the review of systems. That's an important part of a normal physical. And that just asks you many questions about uh, all the different organ systems of the body, including things like from headaches to chest pain to abdominal pain to having trouble passing your urine, etc. The um, there's no there is additional charge for for any actual exam that's done. You have to understand that. So the main difference is that the annual wellness visit is not an examination. You're not going to have your problems addressed maybe as you would like. So you may want to think twice about doing the wellness visit. The annual wellness exam is a screening tool. It most likely will not be what you want. Even if it recommends a colonoscopy, you'll have to schedule another visit for a preoperative examination, which insurance may or may not cover. Medicare does cover the colonoscopy test. In the, in the wellness visit, your here and now pro problems will not be addressed. If you have a cough, a physician examines your lungs and will generate a charge, you may have to pay for it. And I want that to be perfectly clear. It's not a regular visit to the doctor, okay? On a different note, or slightly similar, is I've been noticing lately that some insurances will cover a physical exam as preventative, and you won't have to pay for it. It's not going to be uh, part of your deductible. However, when you call the office for an appointment, You've got to tell them it's an annual exam. You can't say I need refills on my medication because then you're going to be put down as a medication check. And when you come in and see the doctor, the nurse is going to say it's a medication check. And the doctor is going to think it's a medication check. So if you're on cholesterol medication or high blood pressure medication, those are the issues that are going to be addressed. You most likely won't get your prostate examined or your uterus exam. So, uh, but I've had many people get outraged because we charged them for it because they thought it was supposed to be a physical exam. It's not. A physical exam usually takes a long time to do. It's not a quick 10-minute exam. In general, my physical exams take at least 30 to 40 minutes. So, and it concerns me that my patients are getting upset because I'm not charging a physical. It would be fraud if I charged a physical and didn't do it. And insurance companies would be very happy with me. 
So make it clear that if you want your free physical, that that's what you're there for. Um, now I want to talk about some, some tidbits in, in medicine. Maybe I'll just add this on to my show in the future. Um, a diabetic at age 50 will die six years before a non-diabetic. And there's a lot of diabetics and there's going to be a lot more out there. A smoker will die on the average seven years before a non-smoker. And here's an interesting one, and this is some of the dilemmas that medicine runs in, run into. Recently, it was mentioned that Advil or ibuprofen may help prevent Parkinson's disease. Now, on the other hand, Advil, ibuprofen, has been associated with a slight increase of heart disease or heart blockages. So I guess it comes down to don't overdo anything and then in the future of my show, I hope to add maybe some sports interviews uh, or some sports medicine. But that's it for now. I'm Dr. Stephen Dorn, and that is...